All right, let's talk. So earlier this week, there was a report that um, was from Bloomberg um, that reported the um, ongoing development of Crazy Taxi and Jet Set Radio reboots happening over at Sega. And I, I, I'm, you know, the Jet Set Radio guy. I'm the guy who did the video essay on it and stuff like that. And within my circles, I'm the, I'm the big Jet Set Radio fan in my friend group and stuff. So I have had a lot of people ask me for my opinions on this one. And so to, to the point where I, I actually felt like I should just make a video just kind of addressing this. Because I, I'm going to be completely real with you guys. I don't buy it. This report comes from Takashi Mochizuki from Bloomberg, um, the Japanese branch of Bloomberg. And they report that, and I'm reading this directly from the article, Sega Sammy Holdings Inc. is developing big budget reboots of its Dreamcast games Crazy Taxi and Jet Set Radio as it taps its back catalog in search of global hits like Epic Games Inc.'s Fork Knight, according to people familiar with its plans. The two titles would be the first entries in Sega's Super Game Initiative, which the company announced a year ago as an effort to develop recurring revenue sources and build online communities around its software portfolio. Fortnite has become the role model for such games, free to play. It's available across platforms, hosts large multiplayer contests, and includes extras like vehicles, construction, and social events on top of the usual combat, spurring player purchases of in-game items. Um, this report says that the new Crazy Taxi's already been in development for over a year, and uh, apparently Sega aims to release this in the next two to three years, and then um, it, and they don't really say much about Jet Set Radio in particular, and in fact, the article continues to purport like, hey, this actually might get canceled, who knows. Alright, so... Here's, uh, here's what I have to say about this. The notion that Sega would just wake up after 20 years and decide that, hey, these niche franchises, these self-proclaimed niche franchises, I sampled this um, photo from uh, Sega Sammy directly, their investors meeting where they talked about franchises like Jet Set Radio and like Crazy Taxi as being dormant franchises. They're gonna wake up after 20 years and decide to spend a bunch of money rebooting new entries in these niche franchises in the hope that they're going to tap into the Fortnite market? I don't see it. I, ju I just don't see it. I'm sorry, like, don't get me wrong. I love Jet Set Radio. I would love a new Jet Set Radio game. I like Crazy Taxi too. I would love for these games to come back, but not like this. And, and not only does it seem like pretty much the riskiest, uh, riskiest, frankly stupidest thing that Sega could do with these properties versus just, I don't know, re-releasing the old games, making a sort of stab in the dark of what, gauging what sort of interest there even is in these, in these franchises coming back, because I love Jet Set Radio more than most people, but I can sit here and admit to you that it is a niche franchise at this point, you know? And meanwhile, we're talking about a big budget reboot of the Jet Set Radio franchise. Jet Set Radio Future isn't even playable on anything more modern than an Xbox 360 unless you start talking about emulation on PC. So if I were Sega, I would be looking to make these games available on modern hardware before anything else. Um, my working theory on this is that Sega leaked this information intentionally to Bloomberg. Um, let's also consider the source here. I mean, again, I'm sure the people at Bloomberg are fine. I have nothing against people at Bloomberg, but um, this particular reporter has lost a lot of credibility with me. This is kind of the boy who cried Switch Pro, right? The, the Switch Pro rumors started in earnest when Bloomberg reported on them. And of course they turned out to be entirely false. So, Th this place in particular has lost a lot of credibility with me. I'm not going to lie to you. So I sort of feel like Sega put the feelers out and was like, well, let's, you know, let's leak this information ourselves, control it, 
and we'll put the feelers out there because we know it's going to generate headlines and let's see what the fan base says about it let's see how they react to it that's genuinely what i think is happening here more than that the sort of like free to play fortnite model really doesn't even make sense to me for these games like if you're going to talk about any of sega's franchises how does Jet Set Radio or Crazy Taxi fit into that? I mean, in Jet Set Radio in particular, the sort of anti-authoritarian soul of that game goes completely against the grain of the of the of the kind of established norms of microtransactions and free to play and stuff. This just like not only do I not think it's something they'd want to do with the franchise, like it's, it's completely at odds with the soul of the franchise, and you have to imagine that Sega's aware of that. Like, you have to imagine that if Sega brings out a new Jet Set Radio game in over 20 years, and, like, it's going to be filled with microtransactions and stuff, the people that are going to be there for that game, the niche fan base, the hardcore fans that are going to be excited about this, are going to be completely turned off just by the nature of what you're doing. So, um... I don't know, man. I, I think that there was a lot of, like, kind of um, piggybacking with the article. I think there was a lot of, like, oh, but it might get canceled. You know what I mean? And, and I think this is all very intentional. I think this is very targeted. This is very much, let's see what the fan base thinks about this. Um, and then when it comes to the Super game, you know, I have followed this stuff really closely. Again, I sampled that, um, that slide in my video essay. The Super game, to me... When I was reading about it, it seemed like Sega was kind of trying to do their own... Maybe it is a Fortnite thing, maybe it's like a Sega Smash Brothers, it's some sort of like Sega All-Stars thing, but I didn't take it to mean that all of these franchises were going to get their own big-budget AAA reboots. It just doesn't make sense, you know? Um, again, maybe there's a way it could work, but even if it does, I think just the very nature of this idea goes against the heart and soul of these franchises. So, anyway... I personally, I don't buy it. This is just my theory. I would love to hear what you guys have to say about this. I would love to hear your thoughts. Um, if you think this is something they are doing or if you have any ideas of how this could work, kind of let me know what your temperature is on this. How, how are you feeling? Do you think this is real? If it is real, what do you hope they do with it? Let me know in the comments below. Um, but, but that's what I have to say about that. So um, until next time, guys, I will see you later. Bye.